What's going on? Welcome to Tech with Sean, and today we're taking another look at gaming on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. First off, I want to say a big thanks to everybody for um, all the views and comments and feedback on the last MacBook Pro gaming video. I'm glad that it was able to help some of y'all get up and gaming on your system. I did see a lot of comments though from people who play in certain games, especially CPU heavy ones, would still run into some throttling. And so I've been trying to look around and find some different ways besides throttle stop to get around that. The 16-inch MacBook Pro is a thin beast, and when you combine, uh, you know, strong hardware and a really thin chassis and you add gaming, you know, that's going to equal heat at some point. In the previous video, I showed how I was using throttle stop, and it doesn't really work the best on these Intel chips, and, you know, you can limit the boost clocks, but it's not really the best solution. So I found something new. And in this video, I'm going to go through the steps that I've used to kind of tweak the system and bring the CPU temperatures down. And I'll show a little bit of gameplay too, so you can get an idea of how it's performing. Before you even get started, you're of course going to need Boot Camp installed on your MacBook. And you're also going to want to install the latest BootCampDrivers.com custom graphics drivers. I'm using the red version. Now the first thing I'm going to do is fire up msconfig. What you want to do is just go down to the search bar in Windows, type in msconfig and launch the app. And then you're going to want to go to the advanced boot options and we're going to change the number of logical processors from 16 to 12. After you restart the system, it's essentially going to, you know, make it a 6 core 12 thread chip. And paired with something like the 5500 graphics card, that 6 core 12 threads is still going to be more than enough for gaming and by disabling two of those cores in boot camp it's going to help out with the temperatures a little bit. Next I'd recommend installing an app called Max Fan Control and um, this basically just gives you more control over the fan profile in Windows. You can see here I'm using some custom settings. You could copy these or you could use whatever works best for your system. The next thing we're installing is an app called Quick CPU. Now this um, is kind of new to me, but I really like it and it kind of replaces throttle stop. Here in Quick CPU, I've essentially limited the wattage of the CPU so that it all the time can draw 30 watts and then in peak boosts it can draw only 35 watts. This is a big reduction from the stock voltages and it's going to, you know, reduce the temperatures when you're gaming. I've also gone here into the Turbo Boost submenu and I've limited the Turbo Boost clocks to 3.6 GHz. I don't know if you need to do this honestly since we've already limited the wattage, but I was just doing this, you know, because I don't really need any of these games boosting up to like 4. Point whatever GHz um, just to run them at 60 frames per second. And the next app, this is one that I found out about reading online, and this is called More Power Tool. And I'm not the biggest AMD GPU expert, but this is writing something called like power play tables to the card, I believe. But what I've done in the main menu is tick the box to let me adjust the core frequency. And then I've also ticked the box that said auto undervolt. Then in the frequency settings, I've set the card to have a max boost of 1350 megahertz and to only go down to about 500 megahertz. Now, I've seen people saying that they would play and then the card would like throttle and stay down at like 200 megahertz. So I'm hoping that setting a minimum will help it from doing that. And also the card, at least in MSI Afterburner, says that it will boost up to about 1500 megahertz. So by limiting it to 1350, that's going to reduce the, the total, you know, peak temperature it can reach. And I think that hopefully by keeping it from reaching its thermal peak, that's going to keep it from dropping down and staying at those really low clocks. So, you know, it's up to you. You can use it, not use it, play around with the values. But for me, it seems to be doing a pretty good job of keeping the GPU from throttling. Okay, now we have this whole shebang set up. We've got Bootcamp installed. We have the bootcamp.com drivers. We have limited the system to six cores and 12 threads. We installed Quick CPU and limited the wattage. We installed more power tool EXE and um, limited the GPU boost. And we installed max fan control to give us a better cooling profile. So with all that going, let's jump into some games and see how it actually performs. All right, starting things off, Red Dead Redemption 2. And um, you can see here, 
these are the settings that I'm running it at. It's 1680 by 1050. And I have like a mix of different settings, low, medium, you know, I have the textures on ultra though. And with these settings, the system was able to run it quite well and the temperatures are pretty much in check. It only touched on the 80s and you know, for a thin MacBook, that's about as good as you're gonna get in a game like this. It's a beautiful game though, and it's not the, the most action-y, so it's a pretty good fit for the creative type panel that the MacBook has. And the color and the world, you know, on that screen, it just looks really vibrant and it's a pretty fun game to play on your MacBook. Next we have Call of Duty Warzone, and this is a this is the hot new, you know, free-to-play battle royale game from the Call of Duty folks. And a lot of people are probably looking to play this one on their MacBook. And I'm here to tell you that it plays, and it plays pretty well on there. I was surprised I was actually able to turn the resolution up higher than I thought I would in this game, but I will say that the CPU did run a tad warm. So what you could do would be to open up Quick CPU and maybe either lower the wattages by 5 watts each or something, or turn down that peak boost clock from like 3.8 gigahertz to 3.2, and I think that's still going to be fine for pushing 60 frames per second. This game is much more GPU than CPU dependent, I believe. So even at those um, clock rates, you should be fine uh, for playing some Call of Duty Warzone. You know, these Intel chips do run up into the 90s, especially in the MacBook because they're so thin and light. But I myself would rather turn things down and lose a little bit of performance to keep the chips running more in the 80 degree range. So it's really up to you and what you want to do and what kind of trade-offs you want to have for thermals versus performance. And that's really the best part about this quick CPU app, I think, is that it's really adjustable and you can play with it and see, you know, what you need for a certain game or if you don't care, as long as it's not thermal throttling, you know, you can just limit it a little bit and go from there. All right, well, I hope this video was helpful, y'all. If you have any other tips or tricks that might be useful for people gaming on a MacBook, make sure to drop them in the comments down below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.